since since according to Jesus, Elijah must come first and restore all things. That means Jesus himself is saying, Elijah has come. But since he has to come and restore, he did not restore all things. Right. There's no Christian apologist that can say that John the Baptist restored all things. He didn't restore anything. But, yeah. He didn't restore anything. Welcome to the Knock Talk. I'm your host, William Palmer. <laughs> oh, man. Y'all know what show this is. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> it's my friend. It's be that show. Oh, my friend, Greg McBride. You are so funny. I, oh. I was watching you. So so you guys, uh, I have to show them this because I can. Let, let me, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to drag my screen over. Uh, and I'm gonna I'll show you guys in YouTube world what I what I work with here. So, uh, but I, I've got to. Oh, you know what though? I've got to switch. Hold on. Ah, uh, here we go. I'll let you see it from this angle right here. I got to fix it first. Y'all bear with me one second, okay? Because this is definitely worth the wait. So, whenever I start the show, oh yeah, there it is right there. And you're still visible. There we go. Okay, so whenever I start the show, um, you can see my screen here. Uh, th this, this, uh, are you seeing the whole thing? I think so. It's weird. I'm not looking, looking at this the way I used to. Oh no, it's not, it's not the right size. Let's go like this. That's way bigger than I thought it was. Okay. There we go. Okay. There we go. Now we at. So on this side here, we have, this is, this is me and Greg, but what y'all are seeing right now is actually what is on, on the, on the right side. Uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not. You, oh, yeah, you can. So y'all are seeing this box here, and I'm seeing this box here. So the box on the left is not live. Y'all aren't seeing this, but I am. <laughs> so I'm, start, I'm starting this over here with, with the intro with, with, this, uh, with this thing here uh, that's usually right there. And that's where we're going while the music. And here he is over here. Uh, <laughs> you're you're over here you have, <laughs> dancing and did stuff. Did you have naked pictures of me in the bathtub with my cousin <laughs> Beth Ann when I was three? Oh my lord, you crazy. <laughs> anyway, anyway, there's that. I just thought y'all get it. Was it. The 60s. So it I, was the 60s. So I had to I had to I had to get Greg uh, I had to get Greg <laughs> on there quicker than later because he I missed I missed the 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 really sharp point where you were really just getting dancing with him. <laughs> I totally missed that. I was like, hurry, 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 click, click, click. One thing for sure. Oh my gosh. Hey, that was that was fun though. That was fun. Oh, see, I forgot to switch over too. So okay, good deal. All right. So uh so your title for tonight is uh Are Jews the Chosen People? Yeah, but I'm not gonna start off with that. Right, right. I think we have something a little bit more juicy you wanna hit on from what I understand. Yeah. I I received a I received a text message from a Christian apologist who has been on this show. I am not going to name them unless they want to come on the show and defend themselves. So I, I don't do that. But sure. there's been like, I asked this apologist a question. This is like, oh my gosh, six months ago via text message. And he never responded. Then I got a a uh, text message just out of the blue from him about a YouTube video that he has made with, I, I would think that he is probably one of the, I mean, he's not on Jews for Jesus or anything like that. He's an individual, but he's yeah. a very prolific uh, messianic. Right. And so he, this, I, I watched this video, parts of it, and throughout this video, and I remember I, I had said that one for Israel is using the sages of Israel to bolster their arguments. And I, if like two or three shows ago, maybe four or five shows ago, I don't know. And I said, well, once they start using the Talmud, the oral Torah or the rabbinic writings, well, the game is over because, you know, they can't. Uh, number one, they don't know anything about it, but there's no great rabbi like Radak or Rashi or Mamananides or the Ramban, none of those guys ever taught that Jesus was God or right. that Jesus was the Messiah. So, so I got, I got this video 
And I responded, I said, this, they did the same thing in this video. I said, it says, you now consider the sages to be authoritative. He didn't answer. I said, still waiting on your answer. The response from the apologist, it didn't make any sense to me. Why think that? I said, Radak is one of Israel's greatest rabbis. Blank and you are quoting him now. So is he an authority concerning the Hebrew scriptures? Apologist, where do we quote him as an authority? And I said, you are making the video with blank. He is quoting the rabbinic writings and the texts often. Apologist, I know, but we don't quote them as authorities. I said his main point is that Rabbi Singer is at odds with the sages of Israel. And I said, if they are not authorities, then why do you quote them? I am still waiting for a response to that, that text message. Right. <clears throat> um, and so one thing that I was informed about a very uh, prolific rabbi is that Many of these messianics are bad actors. And by that he means they will try to invoke the Talmud, but they don't believe the Talmud. Sure. They just want to confuse people with it. And that's that's what they're doing here. If if you again don't and and rabbis that I engage with, the good rabbis I engage with, they make a very a pointed effort not to involve any rabbinic writings or teachings because they know that people like me, people like William, people like a lot of the people that watch this show and watch this channel, we're, we are so poorly trained to ever understand any of the, the rabbinic writings. And so they don't invoke them because, number one, they don't have to because the, the Torah and the Tanakh are very clear. So I'm going to this very prolific messianic. <clears throat> he brings up how um, the rabbis teach that Jesus taught that his return was imminent. And this messianic just, he has such a, such an air of arrogance about him when he's talking about this. And he says, oh, Rabbi Blank is just all wet on this. He doesn't know. Jesus said that the, his kingdom would be like a man that went on a journey. And so I'm going to read that for you. It's, it's found in the 13th chapter of Mark. <clears throat> And it's right after, it's, we'll start at 32, and I'm reading in my King James, my authorized King James right now. So Mark chapter 13, verse 32. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, nor the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son... Jesus himself doesn't know what day he's coming back, according to his text. But the Father, the Father is the only one that knows. Take heed. Again, this is red letters. Jesus is speaking. If you're following along and you're authorized and you're a Christian, you know that I'm telling you the truth. Take heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Okay, so context. <clears throat> the, the 
the Messianic had just said that the rabbis don't do context. So how long does a man live? Okay, if, you, if you've been watching this channel, you know that it is set by Moses. It's 120 years, all right? So in context, when Jesus is making a analogy between his return and a man who leaves on a journey and leaves his servants in charge, how long does he have until he comes back? He has 120 years if he leaves when he's a baby. If he's a middle-aged man who has a servant household, then he's going to not be coming back in maybe no more than 60 or 80 years. So to say that this passage teaches that it's going to be a long time till Jesus comes back literally ignores the context of the verse because the context is that a man left his house and he returns to find how things are going. But that's not the worst one. The worst one is also found in the book of Mark, ninth chapter. Start at verse 1. And he said unto them, Jesus speaking again, Verily I say unto you that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. William, have you heard that verse before? Yes, I have. Yes, okay. So, I'm pretty sure that uh, two of those people that were standing there are still alive, so it's not really a false I, prophecy they just got, yet. they got to be They alive. have to be. Yeah, they they have, have to be alive because <laughs> Jesus said it. He said it. He said it. He said it. Oh, no, wait. You, Rube, you, Rube, you do not understand the context of this chapter. Clearly, the context of this chapter is the transfiguration. Oh, you simpleton, you. You with that. I, I know why you mm -hmm. wear a derby hat now, <laughs> because you're a simpleton. That's funny. Okay. So let's, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to raise my right hand here because this, these next two points, I, I, these just kind of came into my head yesterday. While I was studiously preparing, I, I, I kind of did prepare for this show, by the way. So we have the Mount of the Transfiguration where Moses and Elijah appear. All right. So let's go down to um, verse 10. And they kept that saying with are we, themselves. Are we still in Mark? We're still in Mark chapter 9, verse 10. Oh, okay, gotcha. The 9, 10, very good. Questioning one with another what the rising from the dead should mean. And they asked him, saying, Why say the scribes that Elijah must first come? Okay. Now, well, let's back up just a little bit. Um, the, at the Peter, James, and John are here at the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus, and Moses and Elijah are there. And verse 7, there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore, save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain... He charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. And they kept saying, what is this rising from the dead? And they asked him, why say the scribes that Elijah must first come? <clears throat> why? Why is that? And he answered and said to them, 
Elijah verily cometh first and restoreth <laughs> all things. And how it is written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught. But I say unto you that Elijah is indeed come, and they have done unto him whatsoever they listed as it is written of him. All right, see, when you, when you start to actually read the Christian Bible, wow, this, this stuff now, now, now remember, we know that John the Baptist says yes. in the first chapter, that he is not Elijah. Right. Jesus says he is. Yep. That he's come, but he is not. So I had an apologist say, uh, I, I, okay, I, for, since I'm cool, I engage with lots of Christian apologists, men who are very smart, by the way, learned, educated, smarter than me. I, I really do. And he said that, John the Baptist just didn't know that he was Elijah. <laughs> oh Lord. Ah, okay, and I, you know, okay, you're at least you're at least you're thinking a little bit, you know. But I want I want to unpack what Jesus says here, and this just dawned on me yesterday. <clears throat> well, first off, what is written that happens to Elijah when he comes? And you'll get an A for effort <laughs> if you can answer this question. Because I have a really good Ryrie study Bible in front of me right now. And when you go over to the margin to find out what verses Jesus is quoting about they will do unto Elijah what is written that they will do unto him, there's, there's nothing listed. Mm. Uh, mm. You know why? Mm. Because uh, when Elijah the prophet comes... <laughs> Number one, he's friggin' Elijah the prophet, right. for heaven's sakes. Names are names for a reason. Names are names didn't, for they a didn't, reason. didn't yeah. say the spirit yeah. of Elijah. It says Elijah. It's it's Elijah. It's yes, Elijah. he's gonna be there. Yes. Who's who's gonna do anything to him? <laughs> he's freaking Elijah the prophet, huh. and right. he's standing there. He's what? Uh, twenty seven hundred years old. Minimum 28, 2,800 years old. He's Elijah the prophet. They, there's nothing written that people do to him anywhere in the Hebrew Bible. What is written about him is what he will do. See, the last chapter of Malachi the prophet, and you will learn everything about what we know from the written Tanakh about what Elijah the prophet will do. So... It's not just that Elijah comes first, but notice what Jesus says. He comes first and restoreth all things. Yep, verse 12, got it. Verse 12. Well, this is true because Elijah the prophet it doesn't say that he restores all things. What does he do? He restores the hearts of the fathers right. to their sons. Yep. Sons, sons of the, the father. Yep. Heart, the hearts of the sons to the fathers. That's what he does. He restores that. William, I have a question for you. Okay. <clears throat> How many hearts of sons did John the Baptist restore to their fathers? What? And again, you can't just make a blanket statement of, Oh, he was such a good teacher, and everybody just sat down and sang Kumbaya. Right, right. You've got to show me in the Christian Bible where it says that John the Baptist did that. Can you can you remember any place where it says that, William? The only hearts he turned that I'm aware of are the ones that asked him, are you John the Baptist? And he said no. <laughs> <laughs> Correct, yeah. That's the only hearts he, he never, ever turned. <laughs> there, There is nothing in your Christian Bible, and... Famous Messianic Christian, I need you because I know that through one of the apologists that was on this show, you're probably tuning into some of this. I need you to show me where John the Baptist did what Elijah the prophet does. Yeah. You can just, 
You can call it in and you can disguise your voice. I don't care. I don't mean to embarrass you. That's not my point. You just need to tell me where this is. So since Jesus himself says that Elijah the prophet will come first before him and restore all things, William, what did I just discover? <clears throat> now, you very, I think, correctly say we're not waiting on the second coming of Jesus. We're waiting on the third coming of Jesus. I'm going to concede away your very logical point. All right. Okay. I'm going to go with mainstream Christian teaching that Jesus' first coming is to the earth. And when he ascended to heaven, that that ended his first coming. The second coming is when he comes, according to the Christian Bible, on the clouds of heaven. Okay. Okay. So, so I've I've conceded that we're waiting on Jesus' second coming. <clears throat> Who else's second coming are we waiting on, William? That would be Elias, Elijah. Elijah's yeah. second coming. Yeah, so he's so Jesus isn't the first one. Oh, <laughs> Jesus isn't the only one who has a second coming. That's funny. A according to this text. Yeah. Now, I'm sure that somebody has... And Elijah, yeah, yeah, right. right. I'm sure somebody's said this before, but I've never heard it before. And as I'm reading this, John the Baptist restored all things. He didn't restore anything. Yeah. He didn't restore anything. But Jesus says he has come, he must come first, and beef, he must beef. restore all things. So This is before Elijah. before the resurrection he was supposed to come, before yeah. Jesus resurrected. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Right. Not before so, the second coming, but before his resurrection. Yep, he's got to come. He's got to come yeah. again. Yeah. Okay, but... What? Okay, so now I'm going to now I'm going to go back to verse one of this chapter, okay. where Jesus Himself says there are people standing here who will not taste of death until they see the kingdom of God coming with power. Okay, you Rube. McBride, you are such a high school educated carpenter. You <laughs> cannot see that what is clearly being referenced here is the Mount of Transfiguration. If you okay. take it, you but you're here's the thing, you noob. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Rube. Look, That's Rube, a Rube. Oh, Rube, not noob. Okay. Yeah, I'm a, a Rube. <clears throat> so uh, I think everybody watching right now can see that you pointed out in a chronological form chapter nine of Mark. And it tells you here the chrono chronological order this is supposed to happen in. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it's so a chronological order. So yeah. so the the point is it, it didn't happen. So no. Rube or noob or whatever, <laughs> you're smarter than the, than they are because this is well, very, this is like I, a this is like an, a set of instructions right here in just this one chapter. It is. This you is know? a set of instructions. The punch list. Check and, it off in order. Boom. Yeah, boom. Boom. Punch list. Punch yep. list. Punch list. But. What does the Son of Man bring with him in the clouds of heaven according to the Christian Bible? The kingdom of God. He comes in power and it's the kingdom of God. So, what else has a second coming, William? What else has a second coming? Be because, well, because the kingdom, McBride, you don't understand that the kingdom of God came in power at the Mount of Transfiguration. Mm. So the kingdom of power will have to have a second. <laughs> the kingdom of God has a second coming. Uh, what <laughs> else? What else can I conclude here? Man. And please, Christian apologists watching the show. Send me the emails. Send them to me because I'm using your Bible. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to say that the Mount of Transfiguration is the kingdom of God coming in power, then your Jesus is absolutely a false prophet because we know the test of a false prophet. What they said is going to happen doesn't happen. There is no Christian apologist today that is contending that people from the first century Judea 
are still walking around the earth today waiting on the kingdom of God to come in power. They have to go to the default that the kingdom of God came in power at the Mount of Transfiguration with Moses and Elijah and the cloud. But it didn't stay. Mm. <laughs> Obviously, it didn't stay. Anybody can look out today and see yep. that it didn't stay. So, Christian, watching the show, your Jesus is not only the, the only one that has a second coming. Right. Elijah, the prophet, also has to have a second for Mark chapter 9 to be true. Mm -hmm. Elijah has a second coming and the kingdom of God has a second coming. Yeah. If unless you concede that the kingdom of God did not come in the lifetimes of those who were standing there listening to Jesus speak and then your Jesus is a false prophet. So yeah. all I'm doing, all I'm doing is reading the text and having half of a brain. That's it. And remember, it's, so, it literally says here um, about the resurrection that Elijah has to come before, not, not before the second, before. not before Jesus' second coming, but before the resurrection. And of course, now... Christian, I, I would say that in context, a very plausible reading of this is that speaking of Jesus' resurrection. But I do know that Christian apologists will wipe that away, and they can. Uh, that's not, that's a point that they can, that, okay, if I was pressed in a debate, I would probably have to concede that it is very plausible that Jesus is talking about either the resurrection of Daniel or the resurrection of uh, of Ezekiel, which are I contend would be the same thing, but he would have to sue. In the, in the Hebrew Bible, Elijah will appear. It's, I don't think it's completely clear whether or not he come, whether Elijah comes before or after the resurrection of the Valley of Dry Bones. But regardless, Christian, you're stuck with Mark chapter 9. And you got to make a decision on this chapter. So Jesus said he's coming back. He doesn't know when. He made the analogy which the Messianic said is so that that a certain very prolific rabbi, boy, I used prolific a lot tonight, didn't I? Yeah. A, a famous rabbi. <laughs> Oh, he's such a he's such a moron because he doesn't know that Jesus departure from the earth is like a man taking a long journey. There's no man that takes a 2000 year journey. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not possible. That's no funny. man did. My gosh, Methuselah is <clears throat> William, if you can answer this, you are smart. How long did Methuselah live? Like 900 and something years. That's all I got. All right, you, that's close enough. 969. He's the, <laughs> he's the longest living man. 969, 969 years. Yep. So according to, according to Messianic preacher, <clears throat> Jesus, Jesus' parable of the man who has to go on a long journey, that man's journey has exceeded by two times, more than two times, right. the longest man who's ever lived on the face of the earth. So I just, I'm pointing stuff out. All I do is point it out. You guys do with it what you want and send me nasty emails about how dumb I am. That'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so That's funny. So, so anyway, um, so the, now the, uh, Oops, did I, oh, you, oh, yeah, you're doing your master clicker thing there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go, oh, oh, there it is. Okay, I want to, oh, one other thing that I always find when I engage with um, very smart men, very smart preachers, and very smart lay apologists, <clears throat> they always, they always just walk away. I, I, they just do. I try to never just walk away. I, you know, if they've got a valid point, I want to explore that. So I asked this, it's actually a friend of mine, 
And you have to be careful because you can alienate your friends. And I, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> so I asked my friend, I said, who did, who did Abraham worship? And he said, well, he worshiped God. I said, well, yeah, he did. Did he worship Jesus? Well, no. Okay. Then, and, then I can't worship Jesus either because if Abraham didn't worship Jesus, then I can't worship him. Deuteronomy chapter 13, read all the way through it through to verses 9 through 13 because those are the ones where it makes it crystal. It, it makes it pretty crystal in 3, 4, and 5, but it really gets crystal in 9, 10, 11, 12. <clears throat> so he said, this, this person said, um, Abraham is worshiping Jesus now and will throughout eternity. Oh my gosh. Okay. So that is a claim. As I want to make very clear. There's, there are claims and there are bedrock truths. Mm -hmm. Not all claims are bedrock truth. And so I asked him where he could point me to confirm what he's saying. Remember, you should never take my opinion at just because it's my opinion. You should study Mark 9, Mark 13 to see if I have accurately <clears throat> espoused the Christian Bible. And if I haven't, then you should contact me and tell me where I did not. That That's just, that's, that's incumbent upon you. You should do that. <clears throat> but you can't just say something like Abraham worships Jesus today and will worship Jesus throughout eternity. Because I have lots and lots and lots of Hebrew scriptures that absolutely contradict that. There is no place anywhere in the Hebrew Bible where it says that Abraham will worship Jesus right. throughout eternity. That's a claim of yours. And you sh I will not accept your claims without Scripture. You should not ex accept my claims without Scripture. So, all right, uh, that took way longer. Now now to get to the title part. Of yes, the... <laughs> but it's good timing, though, because we're, we're half an hour in, so this is good. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay. This is good. 30 minutes right, in. So next 30 so minutes goes to the show. So this is a, with the same apologist that told me Jesus is, or Abraham is worshiping Jesus today. <clears throat> he said that based on <clears throat> uh, Genesis chapter 12, where it says all nations shall be blessed through Abraham. That means that all the nations are the same. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm going to still be in my authorized King James Bible for all three of these verses. I'm going to go to Romans chapter 10. All right. And since William and I spent decades in the church, this creeps into our brains. This person, again, very smart man, he, he would be a great well, I don't know if he'd be great. It'd be fun to have him on the show. I, I don't think he'll ever come on the show because he won't even answer my my messages. Um, the New Testament teachings creep into our brains. They define how we think. And then we go to the Hebrew Bible and we find a passage like the very last verse of chapter 12 of Genesis where it says all the nations will be blessed through Abraham. And then we, since we've already established that, that the Jewish people aren't special, actually they're less than special according to the Christian Bible, they're, they're Satan according to the Christian Bible, that creeps in. So we're going to go to Romans chapter 10, verse 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Between the Jew 
and but when Greek he means Gentile. <clears throat> We're going to go to my dear friends, hope this message finds you well. If you like the way this channel is going and the channel has been a blessing to you, please consider supporting the channel by going to the website, tanaktalk.com, T-A-N-A-C-H-T-A-L-K.com. Thank you once again for your time and for supporting Tanakh Talk. Shalom. Galatians chapter 3. And I didn't write it down. Where is it at? I got it right here. What's what's the point? What what's verse the... is it? Three. What? Foolish Galatians. Uh, this is embarrassing. What is the? Uh, this? There's no Jew and no Greek. Oh yeah, I got you. There's no. No, my goodness, promise. Uh, that would be a different. Uh... And now a mediator. Gosh darn it! I had it in my. It might. Uh, I don't think. Gosh, it's, I don't think it's in three. Uh, see, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Twenty-eight. 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 There you go. Oh, clear over here. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay. Now flip to the next verse. To Colossians three. Mm -hmm. Verse 11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Okay, so this one even adds circumcision. There's no such thing as circumcision or uncircumcision. Now, Christian, again, watching this show, this is in your King James Bible. It is very clear. No difference between Jews and Greeks. Now, I'm going to get my stone edition out here, and it's virtually the same in your King James. But I'm going to go to Deuteronomy in my stone, and I'm going to go to chapter 7. We're going to start at verse 1. Oh, by the way, the, the apologist that these two questions came out with was very, he said that it was very demeaning to him that I read the scriptures. Hmm. Uh, and I, he said, that's very demeaning to me. I can read them myself. Oh, Lord. I, I wanted to say, well, you obviously haven't. Right. I, I was going to say me. the same thing. He clearly <laughs> that has would be not. mean. And I, so I don't think, and I'm, I'm sure that rabbis would agree, there is never anything bad about just reading the Hebrew Bible. Right. So chapter 7 of Deuteronomy, when Hashem your God will bring you to the land to which you come to possess it, and many nations will be thrust away from before you. What the verse? Hittite, the, I apologize. Oh, what's that? What, what oh, verse? Chapter 7, verse 1. Oh, okay. I'm one, I'm one in, my, in my stone. I'm going to try again to put this up. I think I might be able to get it to focus this time. We'll see. Okay. Oh, there's some extra credit questions here. Let's hey, if you're, if you're responding in the chat, and if you know the answer to this, I'm going to send you your own story free or your own $15 towards your stone edition. All right. So many nations will be thrust away from before, but you got to do it pretty quick. You can't Google it. <laughs> I, I'm going to trust you on your honor. You can't Google the answer. But if you know this, very good. It's almost as good as knowing Zalafahed's daughter's names. <laughs> 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 These are the nations the Hittite, the Girgashite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, seven nations greater and mightier than you, and Hashem your God will deliver them before you, and you will smite them, you will utterly destroy them. In the 23rd chapter, a, a, a Christian called in, Daniel was his name, and the 23rd chapter the an angel of the Lord will go before the children of Israel and will drive out 
six of these nations, and then in the 12th chapter of Joshua, verse 8, those nations are delivered into the hand of Joshua, and he smites them for extra credit for fifth, for for twenty five dollars towards your st- own stone edition. Mm. What what nation that I just listed is not listed in the twenty third chapter of Exodus and the twelfth chapter of Joshua? And if you can tell me the reason why that nation is not listed, then I'm going to just buy your whole stone edition for you. <laughs> you can, I will pay for the whole thing and they're not cheap. So now, anyway, now to, to be questions. Okay. So to be what? clear, if 15 or 200 people send you an email all at the same time, oh, do, well. you, do you want to put a clarifier on that at all? <laughs> well, there's only like two people that watch the show, Adam, <laughs> my mom and your mom. So they're not, they're not going to I, I, Well, they got to do it. Like you got to do it quick here. Yeah. And, you cannot have Googled the answer. Well, I don't even think you could Google the answer yeah. to this. Today, this so to be to be clear, today's date is January eighteenth, twenty twenty three. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's like, uh, uh, it's. Uh, How long do eight, they have? How long do they have? They got, like you got you got it. You got either know this or you don't. You got like one minute to get it in here. Okay, so Maybe. it it, it is at, uh, at eight fifty one p.m. On January the eighteenth, twenty twenty three. So if, you you, if if you're watching this after this show is over, then this this you don't get it. You don't get you, just, you don't get this. You gotta know this, <laughs> and we're gonna call it the Zalapahead's Daughters Award. <laughs> so GC McBride sixty three is on your screen. GC McBride well, sixty three at gmail.com. Well, no, you gotta send it to the chat that's in the oh chat. Okay, yeah, yeah I guess you would need to find it to the out. Chat right okay, now because you can't fake that. Right. It's live. Tag me, so. tag me, uh, put at to knock talk if you know what it is. Yeah. Where we can yep. see it. You got your clock is counting. So yep. anyway. You okay. Um, you shall not intermarry with them. You shall not give your daughter to his son. You shall not take his daughter for your son, for he will cause your child to turn away from me, and they will worship the gods of others. Then Hashem's wrath will burn against you, and he will destroy you quickly. Rather, so shall you do to them. Their altar shall you break apart. Their pillars shall you smash. Their sacred trees shall you cut down. And their carved images shall you burn in fire. Okay, we did all that to get to this. For you are speaking to the nation of Israel. For you are a holy people to Hashem. Your God, Hashem, your God has chosen you to be for him a treasured people Mm. that is totally equal to all the other nations. No, a treasured people above all the peoples that are on the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Israel, you, not that you are better people. People, not not that you're more right. Well, no, I don't even want to say that. You are treasured. You are the 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 Hebrew Bible describes Israel as the apple of God's eye. Whenever you hear a apologist say, "Oh, Israel forfeited their chosenness because they sinned," use this verse right here. You are treasured above all the peoples that are on the earth, and then he gives the reason. He, he gives the reason. It doesn't have anything to do with Israel's sin. Like the messianic person said in one of his freaking videos that is painful to watch. I hope that I'm never painful to watch, by the way. Verse 7, not because you are more numerous than all the peoples did Hashem desire you and choose you, for you are the fewest of the peoples, rather because of Hashem's love for you, and because he, Hashem, observes the oath that he swore to your forefathers, did he take you out with a strong hand and redeem you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt? You must know that Hashem, your God, he is the God 
the faithful God who safeguards the covenant and the kindness for those who love him and for those who observe his commandments for a thousand generations. He repays his enemies in his lifetime and makes him perish. He shall not delay for his enemy in his lifetime. He shall repay him. You, Israel, shall observe the commandment and the decrees and the ordinances that I command you today to perform them. William, if yes. Israel is not <clears throat> treasured among all the nations, who reneged? Was it Israel? No. <laughs> Israel's, if Israel today, and it is extremely, I'm not going to say prolific. <laughs> <laughs> it is extreme, extremely common <laughs> teaching that Israel has abrogated its role as yeah. the chosen people. You can watch all the Christian channels on on yeah. cable, and they all basically say the same thing. But if Israel is not today treasured above all the peoples, who didn't keep their bargain? That would be it's Hashem. not Israel. It would be Hashem. Yeah. It would be Hashem. Yeah. Hashem did not keep his bargain. William, does Hashem keep his bargains? Yes. Yes, he yes, does. He so, does. Christian, when you start to buy into the Messianic teachings <laughs> that Israel is not really the children, oh, yeah. they're just, oh, they're... Uh, this, is, this is really important mm -hmm. because... It wasn't Israel that broke the covenant. If if they are no longer the treasured among, a treasured above all the nations, people, Hashem mm -hmm. broke the ark, broke yeah. the covenant, and that's what you'd have to, that's what you'd have to yep. come up with. Now, I don't expect that apologists ever read this stuff. I really don't. Oh, by the way, the answer to the question. Did anybody get the answer to the question, William? I did. Not, I wait, didn't. wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> hey, William, who's walking away here with a brand new stone edition of the Bible? Uh, oh, Miriam says two people answered. I'm scrolling back up to see. Okay. I'm um, looking. Okay, Miriam, so, I don't. This is so cool that we can do this in live time. Miriam, by the way. <laughs> you're, you're the only one who tagged me. So uh, if, if, if the people who, uh, if two other people quoted this or got the answer, you need to tag me so I can see it. Or maybe, Miriam, you can copy and paste it for me so I can see it. Because there's far too many comments to just read through to try to what, find it. What so was their answer? I don't see it yet. I'm waiting for them to paste it so I can see it. Oh, okay. Paul wrote. All right. uh, I can reveal the answer if you. And this is where you sit up late at night and read rabbinic commentary. <laughs> 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 and That's then funny. and somehow remember. Oh, by the way, William, sometimes I watch this show just to learn stuff from me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> All right. Hittites, Amorites, the, and a few others. They, okay. Well, no. So the the nation that is not listed in, in Exodus and in in Joshua are the Girgashites. The Girgashites are not listed. Gotcha. And the reason that the Girgashites probably are not listed is because they were the smallest of the seven Canaanite nations. So that's the, that if you, so, hey, do I get the Zalafahed Daughters Award then? Whew. I, yeah, I get it myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if anybody answered that, the Girgashites are not listed in, in the, only six of the nations are listed. Mm, so wow. the Gergish, the Gergishites are not. So if you answered that, you get you get twenty five bucks sent to you, so you can purchase your stone edition. Damn and it. if you out, and if you said they're not listed because they were the smallest of the seven Canaanite nations, then okay. So Miriam said that no one answered Gergishites. Oh dang it! <laughs> Thank you, Miriam, for tracking down those answers for Thank me. I you. appreciate, we appreciate that. it. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> so that's great. Wow.
Okay, we're gonna we're gonna slip back here to okay. Um, uh, we're gonna slip to Colossians back to Colossians chapter three because this is really important. Okay, I'm on there now. This is really important in my King James Bible. We're going to and William, you're gonna answer this one. Okay. Verse ten, and have put on the new man. This was, you know how big this was when we were in the church, right, oh, oh, William? Yeah. The oh, new yeah. man. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. every fifth sermon was about the new man. Yep. <clears throat> which is renewed in knowledge, which is funny because knowledge puffeth, puffeth up. up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. I, 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 That's I shouldn't funny. have stolen that one from you because I knew that your brain was already thinking about that. <laughs> but, but anyway is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Okay, so let's read it. Let's read it so we can get the context. And have put on the new man. This is about people who believe in Christ. Okay. Have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Okay, who, who does even the Christian Bible acknowledge created the new man? I mean, uh, or created man or the new man. I, I guess it would be worse. Uh, okay, so, okay, yeah, this is, so I had in my brain that the, uh, him was Hashem. Right. Okay. So, William, where are we shown an image of Hashem? We are not. In fact, we, we are we are steered very, very vehemently away from such things. Oh, this is as important a text, I think, as yeah. is in the in the Hebrew Bible. Right. You saw no, you only heard a voice. You That's saw right. no image. Lest you and corrupt again, yourselves and make your, lest you corrupt yourselves and make you lest an you image of male or female. A male or female male. or anything. Yeah. Really, you can't anything. Yeah. So the author of Colossians says that you are renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Now, if you're going to say that the created him is Jesus, the him there they're going to say would be would be Jesus. Would be Jesus. So. And the image of him would have to be Hashem, but there is no image of him. There's no image, but the image that every Christian has in their mind yes. is the image of a what, William? It's going to be a cross and of Jesus on the cross. It's going to, I mean, well, but what is he? The image. When when you walked into your church, probably what did you see somewhere in the church? You saw a picture of a man that you said was Jesus, right? right? I mean, yeah. we had, my grandma had one in her house. And I mean, I looked at that thing a thousand times when I was a little kid. But if the him is Jesus that created the new man, Jesus is the image of a man, mm -hmm. which is forbidden mm -hmm. by Deuteronomy chapter 4. You can't make an image of a man. You cannot. You are expressly, explicitly, literally forbidden to make an image of a man. And yeah. Jesus is an image of a man. It gets a little worse here. Well, probably not worse, but it's at least on par. Verse 11 says, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, we just, we just eviscerated that. Again, Deuteronomy chapter 7. Circumcision nor uncircumcision. This is a very clear teaching of the, of the Christian Bible that... There's no more circumcision. It's done away with. Remember, Paul says famously, yeah. if you're going to circumcise, you might as well castrate, right. yeah. basically. 
So let's just, again, where you do not take my opinion. I have to provide you with what the prophets of <clears throat> Israel say. So we're going to go to Ezekiel. In my stone edition, we're in Ezekiel chapter 44. Oh, sorry, one second. You may have to go chapter, to it first. Chapter 44, and we're at verse... <clears throat> then say to the house of rebellion, the house of Israel, thus said the Lord Hashem Elohim, you have indulged too much in all of your abominations, O house of Israel. By bringing in strangers of uncircumcised heart and uncircumcised flesh to be in my sanctuary, to defile my temple when you offer my food, fat and blood. And they have violated my covenant in addition to all of your abominations. You did not safeguard the charge of my holy places. You set as guardians of my charge in my sanctuary those who were for yourselves. Thus says the Lord Hashem Elohim, any estranged person of uncircumcised heart or uncircumcised flesh shall not enter my sanctuary even any estranged person among the children of Israel yes William you do not and this is and oh the Christian apologists get real cute oh this is talking about the second temple oh my word mm. oh my word I I, I, I want to pull my my very thick and very nice hair <laughs> you didn't notice there's no bald spot you know i oh i i, I, I that's, digress that's why that's why i wear i want to <laughs> i want to pull my hair out when they say that this is talking about the second temple yeah oh my gosh this in the second temple israel allowed well there was there's a lot of things that they allowed but in the third temple, in Ezekiel's temple, and it's not really Ezekiel's temple, but we call it Ezekiel's temple because 40 chapters 40 through 49, the last 10 chapters of Ezekiel are almost wholly devoted. You don't learn any more about the, the final temple that will stand on Mount Zion than you do in the last 10 chapters of Ezekiel. But Hashem very clearly, very succinctly states that you will be circumcised of heart, which all Christians agree with, mm. but you will also be circumcised in your flesh. And if you're mm. not circumcised in your heart and in your flesh, the word of Hashem, you do not get to enter my sanctuary. You do not get to come in. And you know what? All the nations are going to come up to Israel to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Sukkot. You are explicitly told that in the 17th chapter of Zechariah. Please read it for yourself, and then you will know that if you are in the land of Egypt and you don't go up, yeah, guess what? I don't make the Nile flood. And if you're in the land of Turkey and you don't come up, guess what? You don't get no rain. Hashem makes it very falsifiable, you know, just like when... Uh, when Ezekiel or when Elijah kept it from, well, through the power of Hashem, kept it from raining for three years. He didn't make, keep it from raining for three years in the land of Israel because they were being good. Hashem just said, hey, you, you guys want to do your own thing? That's fine. So that you know that I <clears throat> am the creator of you, Israel, and the heavens and the earth. I'm just gonna I'm not, I'm not gonna mess around and say, well, you know, your your firstborn will get chicken pox or <laughs> your whatever. I'm just gonna make it not rain for three years. How about that? 
And then we'll decide who's really in charge. Is it you and your arrogant heart? Or is it me and my omnipotence and omniscience and omnipresence? We'll, we'll just let, we'll, we'll let you know, because you can't make it rain if I tell it not to rain. And then we know exactly who's in charge. Right. <laughs> so, you know, so. going back on the circumcision of the heart thing, um, all of my growing up in the Christian church, I always thought the circumcision of the heart was a New Testament thing that God was doing <clears throat> for us through Jesus. But right here in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, 30. Ah, says, you and it. the Lord yes. thy God will circumcise your heart. And then sc scroll down two verses, and you shall return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all of his commandments, which I command you, you this day. day. So the point is, yes. if, if, if you're a Christian watching the show and you want to find out what it means to be circumcised in your heart, then you have to go back to where it tells you what circumcision of the heart is. And it is doing all the commandments. And in those commandments yes. is circumcision of the flesh. You can't Correct. say that you're circumcised of the heart if you're violating the, the laws of the uh, that are actually written for us to do in the flesh. So, Correct. yeah, it's 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 not yeah. not how it works, right? So, right. yes, the thing that uh, as as an overall, I'm going to say this as a blanket statement. Um, I have found in my lifetime that um, I don't know. I don't know if any any people in the Christian Church uh, and most of the ones in the Messianic movement. Uh, now so I'm, I'm just going to go for now just with the Christian church. Um, it doesn't matter what denomination you're from. It's, if you're a mainstream Christianity, here's the thing. You know, um, I don't know a single church that, that likes anything that God stood for in, in Tanakh. They didn't like the Sabbath day. They, nope. didn't, they didn't like eating kosher. Nope. They didn't like this. The only thing they love are the things that will benefit them, like, you know, you shall not steal. Well, they love that because they don't right. want anybody stealing. Oh, them, yeah. Right? Yeah. And so right. how can you say that you love God, but you but you don't love anything that he stands for in the sense of Correct. in the, in the sense of yeah. things that that belong to the flesh, right? So right. for me, that's troubling. It's very troubling. And then it's it, I believe it's in the book of Hebrews, um, what's, what's where context? Paul is quoting Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, mm. and he says, or no, he's not quoting 30, verse 6. It's It would be one chapter back, be the end of chapter 29, I think. And he says, um, all these things, uh, or I give you all this Torah that you will do it. Oh, right, and right. Paul drops that off at the end. Not mm. to do it, he says, of what we preach or something along that right. line. Wow. Um, he, it's another place where he changes the Hebrew Bible because um, we know that he, we know what it says because you can take your King James Bible and just go back and read it for yourself. Um, it, it's got in there. Hey, yeah. With your master clicker thing there, look up where, uh, well, ascends to heaven. Uh, just a second. I bet I can uh, say not ascend to heaven. Uh, is uh, New Testament to, to bring Jesus down? Uh, say not. Uh, well, I can find it here, real quick. By the way, this is this is my master clicker. <laughs> hey man, I, I've I've got that looks like a newer version of the one I've got. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, um, so, to, what what was the actual word you're looking for? Uh. Is it a sin to heaven? Uh, he changes it. He says it in in Deuteronomy. It says that you may do it, that you may do the Torah. And Paul changes that and says that what we preach or something along that that is to bring Christ down. Uh, let me okay, see. so let me look that one up. Knowing yourselves, written, having God, appear. 
Okay, so uh, that is to bring Christ down. There's Romans ten six possible. Romans ten six. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Romans ten six. Uh, yeah, but it verse eight. But what saith it? The word being even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. And that is Deuteronomy chapter 30, uh, verse, it's in the middle. Uh, I had it early, teen, early teens, 30, right, 30, Deuteronomy 30. 30, 30 11 maybe? 30, that'd be close, yeah. 30. Oh, four, 30, 14 says, 30, 14, but the word is very yeah. near you in your mouth and your heart that you may observe it. Is that what That you there? may observe it. Paul says... That it says that the word that, but what the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That is not what the 30th chapter of Deuteronomy says. Right. It says that you may do it or observe it. That's what, and it's talking about the Torah. Well, no Christian author. This is why Paul is not a Pharisee. Goodness gracious. Do you really think that a student of <clears throat> Gamaliel... He's not even fair, you see. Would What? <laughs> He's not even fair, you see. <laughs> <laughs> Do you... Okay, Christian, watching this channel, because you are going to hear that Paul was... Well, Paul makes the claim that he is a Pharisee's Pharisee. And that's a, that's a big thing. He is a student of Gamaliel. Gamaliel is one of the great rabbinic teachers of the of Israel at the time. Do you really think that a student of Gamaliel, and I believe I was taught anyway that a a Pharisees of Pharisees would have meant that Paul was a prodigy and that by age 13 he would have memorized the Torah. That is what I was taught. I don't know if that is true. And people out there who are, we got some smart people watch this channel, I'll tell you that. You can, you can research that and see. But I, I was taught that Paul was a prodigy, that to be a Pharisee's Pharisee was, was a very rare thing, and that by the age of 13, you would have memorized the Torah which is wow. 308,640 letters. And you didn't just memorize the Torah, you memorized all the letters. So do you really think that Paul, a student of Gamaliel, would not know what the book of Deuteronomy says concerning the Torah? I mean... And if, if you think that that's plausible, that he really wouldn't know what it says, then, oh, okay, just <laughs> right. go your merry way, <laughs> eat your soup. <laughs> um, but th this is why one of the more laughable things that apologists claim to me is that, well, you've got to believe Paul because he was a Pharisee. Now, how many Christian apologists think that Pharisees have authority? <laughs> That's zero. Right, right. But Paul does because he was a Pharisee. Wow, that's a head scratcher, isn't it? There is there is no Christian apologist that think that Pharisees have authority. Wow. <clears throat> well, except for Paul, because he was a Pharisee. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. You know, well, this just check your brain at the door. Absolutely. And go with what you want to go with. And I, I do not ever want to come across as arrogant because I taught this excrement <laughs> when I was in the church. Uh, I did. I, I taught that Paul was authoritative because he was a Pharisee. And at the same time, I denounced all the rabbis. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I did the and, same thing. Yeah. And it didn't dawn on me that what I was doing was, <clears throat> you can't even call it circular reasoning, really, because right. there's no reasoning involved. Yep. Um, <laughs> but I, so I understand that. But, you know, just step back for a minute and 
accurately evaluate because there is no way that a Pharisee, there is no way that Rabbi Skobach, Rabbi Fedro, Rabbi Malat, Rabbi Singer, none of them would tell you that Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 14 says what Paul says it says. And not one of them. And looking at this side by side now, I've got them both on your screen. Oh, so, yeah, you do. so Deuteronomy Ooh. says, but the word is very nigh unto thee in the mouth and thy heart. That, keep a, pay attention to that word right there, that. I know that. this is not Hebrew, but this I'll is the point. That you may do, do it. Do what? Do the word. Do the word. And here, do the word. and over here it says, the word is nigh thee even in the mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith. That. If we you preach. confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you shall believe in God and be raised from the dead, and you shall be saved. Where where can you get that? That from is Deuteronomy, not Deuteronomy chapter thirty, right? That that the author of Romans, which is always accepted as being Pauline, yep. that he is quoting that, and he's a Pharisee, and he's a teacher of the law. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Check your brain at the door. Yep, you have to. And <clears throat> and and. and that's that's all I've got to say about that. <laughs> that is okay because we are at hour ten, and you are later oh than you gosh. have, than you, and you're later than you've ever been. Thanks to I me, I am later than I have ever been. Hey, do I get overtime pay? You do. You, you do. I do. When, yeah. When, when you <laughs> yes. come when you come down here, I'm going to buy you a glass of something you don't want, and then I'll oh. drink it because I know you won't want it. I know what's going to be in that glass. <laughs> I can't even hardly get it down. But I thought you liked whipped cream. <laughs> I do like whipped cream. <laughs> oh, I want the the butterscotch. The ready whip. They make a they make a creamier one, and oh, it's better oh, than the red funny. cans. Got to get the blue can. Oh, nice! So when you hold it up and squeeze it in your mouth, it's like the blue can. <laughs> not that I would ever do that. That's you funny. Oh <laughs> my lord! I mean, not good, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank it's you. it's been a fun, wonderful evening, Greg. Thank you so much for your time. You're awesome. You're and, welcome. Uh, we'll we'll see you, Shim right. Willing, same time, same place next week. Shim Willing, y'all have a wonderful rest of your night. Take care, everybody. Peace. Thank you. Hello, my dear friends. Hope this message finds you well. If you like the way this channel is going and the channel has been a blessing to you, please consider supporting the channel by going to the website tanaktalk.com. T A N A C H T-A-L-K dot com. Thank you once again for your time and for supporting Tanak Talk. Shalom. Bye.